This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits and welcome back to the non-game game dev series of videos. So when we last left off, we were able to start playing our game, play through our game to the goal, and then kind of restart either going back to our main menu or to the level itself. However, we're only ever to able to play one level using this level data variable here in our level manager. And it would be nice if we could actually start, you know, kind of controlling, managing, and actually having a level progression through our game and being able to keep track of the multiple levels that we create. So what I want to do is create another scriptable object in addition to our level data that will contain all of our different levels, create a level catalog. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to our game folder in our scripts and create a new C sharp script and we're going to call this level catalog. I'm going to open this up in mono develop and I've also got my level data open as well which is actually going to be a little bit useful for us. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing and I'm actually going to copy these first couple lines here because we're going to do some similar stuff. We're going to be creating a scriptable object and it's nice to have this asset menu option to create it. So I'm just going to paste that into here and then make sure I change this back to level catalog. And the other thing we can change in here is we've got our create asset menu. Our menu name for this one's going to be instead of label level data, data file slash level catalog. Now the main thing that this is going to contain is an array of level data. So I'll create that right now. I'm going to say level data array and we'll call it levels. Now we want to obviously be able to access this, but at the same, and we need to be able to modify it, but at the same time, we don't want to have any scripts risk changing it during our play of our game. And for that reason, I don't want to make this a public variable. I don't want to make it completely public so that we could, you know, accidentally access it and, you know, reset it or anything during our game. However, I do want to be able to look in our um, inspector and see it. In fact, what I can do right now, let me go here. I'm going to create a couple folders in here now. I'm going to create one folder called levels. Put these all in here and then create another folder called catalogs. And you might want multiple catalogs, like one for your demo game, one for your full game. So what we'll do is we'll create data file level catalog. So we've got this here and I'm going to just call this, um, I'll just call it first catalog. And the problem right now is obviously we have, there's an array that exists in here, but we can't access it in the inspector. We're going to solve that using an attribute and much in the way that this is an attribute up here to create the asset menu, we're going to do one here and it's going to be serialized field. And what that does is that means that this stays private as far as code is concerned, but now in the inspector, we can actually access this, we can modify it, we can add levels to it. Now we have access to that. So we can now modify this as designers, but our game isn't going to risk changing it later on. However, we do want to provide some public methods in here so that we can look at those levels and say, hey, I need a level based on this particular parameter, and then the level catalog will get them for us. So the first thing we can do for that, let's say we want to, primarily I think what we're going to want to do is say like, oh, I want the third level of the game. So pass in, you know, an integer and get a level based on that. So let's do public level data. This will return a level data for us. And we'll say, we'll call this um, get level. And we're going to pass in an integer called index. First thing we can do is we can say if index is greater than levels dot length, then we can simply return because we know that it's an index that is incorrect. And in fact, we need to because this is. Um, is not returning void, we need to specifically say return null. Actually, this needs to be um, greater than or equal to levels.length, because if it is actually equal to length, then it's one further, because we're zero indexing. 
or for that matter, if index is less than zero, we should also not return anything because obviously an array isn't going to have indexes below zero. However, if either if neither of those is true, then we are within the range of our level data array, so we can actually return levels at index of index. So that's pretty much the most basic thing we're going to do now is we're, going to be, we're able to say, hey, I know the number I want, you know, let me get that level. So the other thing we might want is to say, hey, if, um, if we, know we're, we know we're on a given level right now, what is the index of this level so that we can just increment it and go to the next level and then just use this get level with that incremented value? And so we can do that by saying public int get index of level data data. And we could go through the process of kind of doing a for loop through our array, checking if the data that we have matches one of the data in that levels catalog and getting the index that way. Or we can simply do system.array, which is kind of in the core functionality of C sharp, and say system.array index of data. And we'll simply return that. And what this will return for us, if we look here, we'll see uh, unknown resolve error. That's interesting. Index of data. Save this quickly because that should work. Why is that saying that? Let's see if Unity is. Th oh, because we need to pass in the array as well. There we go. That's why needed both the array and the data. And what this will do now for us is say, if data exists in levels, here's the index of it. Otherwise, it'll just pass us back negative one. And so we can kind of use that as our check. We can, in fact, we can say here, we'll say, um, we'll return negative one if data is not in catalog. Save that there. And so that gives us those two things. Last thing I do want to quickly include in here is a um, public int. And this is actually going to be a property we're going to do. And I'm just going to call this length. And all this is going to do is just give us easily the length of this array. It's something we may want from time to time. For example, if we get this index and find out that it is actually um, the very last um, element in this array, then we're obviously not going to want to go to the next level because there is no next level. Things like that we can double check. So we'll say public int length um, get, and we'll simply return levels dot length. And now technically, um, I guess for formatting, we should do it in this way here. Uh, but you can also do it all on one line if you want to kind of keep your code a little bit more succinct. So that really creates our level catalog. Now we have, in here, not a lot has changed. We've still just got this array, but we are now going to be able to, in our code, be able to check the length of this array. We're going to be able to get elements from the array and also check where we are within that array at a given time based on what level we're currently playing. So with that, um, from here, we're going to be able to move on to our next video where we talk about actually um, actively moving from level to level using this system in place. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.